Hey, this is Pastor Curry, pastor of the Ease Eye and Fair Baptist Church, Wilmington's most exciting church, the church that love ya and ain't a thing you can do about it. Today with Coffee with Curry, we want to do a special tribute to our dear friend and faithful member of Ease Eye and Fair, Dr. Terrence Newton Jr. Let me just say this to you. We know him as Newt and he has been so much to so many people. I want you to call somebody real quickly. Tell him Coffee with Curry is on and let's get after it. And we're back. Saints, last week I was away and I wasn't able to come to you because most of our videoing is certainly pre-recorded. But I wanted to take a moment in the rush of the day as so many people are grieving uh, the transitioning of our dear friend, Brother Newt. Um, faithful brother, strong brother who understood life and understood his contribution to life. As we look at the various things we're going to cover in this Coffee with Curry, I want to start off by talking about the song that he often loved and he shared with me was one of his favorites. And that is, made the work I've done speak for me. He wasn't one who patted himself on the back. It wasn't one who tried to be above anyone because he did have a doctoral degree. You never would know it if you did not know that he had gone and gotten it because he never tried to look down on anyone or stand on someone to make himself taller. I am very much and have always been very much impressed with Brother Newt. He understood what teaching what being a principal really was. And today I'm just going to spend a little bit of time with you sharing videos, sharing different things to speak to the man, the person who God used in the season that he used him in, that he may be a blessing to its community. According to his bio, it was very clear. He was born November the 22nd, 1974 just 47 years ago. No one never knows what day or what hour we will transition from this world. But Job had forewarned us that man that is born of a woman is of a few days and those days are full of trouble. But listen to me carefully. What we do in the life that God has given us in the time that God has given us, it really matters. God will never give us a, a task without giving us the time to fulfill it. Brother Newt did what God has called him to do. He showed the education process that, listen, you can come from the back and still stand in the front. He showed us what a principal really looks like. He shows us, showed us what a father looks like, a husband looks like. And I think that is something worthy and noteworthy. But through it all, whatever place he found himself, he never forgot his God. We know, yes, he was a part of the Thunder Guards. Yes, he was a member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Yes, he was a graduate of Dell State three different times. Uh, yes, he was a member of the Ezion Fair Baptist Church. And we can go on the Mondays Club. We can go on and on and on with the, the plethora of things that he was involved in. But this is one thing I want to make sure we never forget. He understood and cared deeply for the God of his salvation. We often measure a person based on how much time they spend in church. God measures us by how much church we give to those who are a part of humanity. Those young people over at Warner Elementary School, they will miss a giant. He cared passionately for them. And it becomes important as we move forward through this time of tribute for him that we reflect on the things that he has taught us. All too often, we look at individuals and say, this person is not old enough to teach life lessons. 47 years old, a tender age. But listen, in his 47 years, he's done more than others have done in 50, 70, 80, 100 years. He is a great giant. I just want you to remember the words of one of his favorite songs. May the work I've done speak for me. Listen, it's speaking loud now. The works that he has performed, how he has cared for people, it is showing now. I was going over his bio. Brother graduated in 19. 
93 from Hodgin uh, Vocational Technical School. This brother then went on to Delaware State, played football there, associated himself with positivity, although negativity was always trying to knock on his door. He found himself with three, four loving children who he was a father to, a daddy to, who he stuck with through thick and through thin. That's what we must always remember and stand ready to defend. I want you to hear this song because as I think of him, I'm, the song, I was singing it for the last two days and I want to make sure that you hear, may the work I've done speak for me. God bless you. May the works I've done Speak for me. May the works I've done speak for me. When I'm wrapped in my grave and there's nothing else can be said, may the works I've done speak for me. May the works I've done speak for me. May the works I've done speak for me. When I'm resting in my grave and there's nothing else can be said, may the works I've done, oh Lord, speak. For me, may the service I give speak for me. May the service I give speak for me. When I've done the best I can, and my friends don't understand, may the service. Speak for me The works I've done The works I've done Seem so small Seem so small Sometimes it seems like Sometimes it feels like Nothing at all When I stand before my judge I want to hear him say Well done May the works I've done, oh Lord, speak for me. Hey, oh, the works I've done. The works I've done. It seems so small. Seems so small. And it seems like. It seems like. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. When I stand before my judge. I want to hear him say, well done, may the works I've done, may the service I give, may the life I live, may the people I touch, may the works I've done, service I give, life I live, people I touch. Works I've done, service I give, life I live. May the works I've done ooh, speak for me. Yeah. I hope that you enjoyed that selection because in actuality that was brother newt's life may the works i've done speak for me all too often when people transition we try to find words to clarify and to speak to the person this brother did so much made national news pouring into young people his babies that he called them he didn't say look at them as being just scholars and students 
but they were his babies because he cared passionately for them. And not only did he care passionately for them, he put skin in the game to make sure they felt special in every way. There's a scripture that I want to share with you. It's from Ecclesiastes 11 and 8. I found this scripture years ago and it has brought solace to my life. It says, however many years one may live, let them enjoy every one of them. When I looked over Newt's life, I've come to the conclusion he took to heart that scripture. He had fun. All too often when we are PhDs and when we are EDs and DDs and all these degrees, we lose sense of ourselves. He never did that. He had fun. He made sure that his young people saw him as a person who have gone through the rigor of the university, but yet remain a common person who cared genuinely for them. Let's look at a few of these clips to show you the fun that he had. I think that people have to understand that the work that Newt did was daily from the opening bell to the last bus left the parking lot in the afternoon. Newt was grinding. He grinded even after the bell, working into the late hours of the night. Newt was more than a principal. He was a blessing. How we show support is invested in the kids every single day the way that Newt did. Those teachers will not be helped if we go over there and stand out front every day. And I'm not intimating in any way that those that have been doing those types of things shouldn't continue those things. But I'm saying if you haven't been over to that school this year, if you haven't been in conversation with, with Dr. Newton about developing a program or, or helping to assist mentor students there, then what you need to do is follow the lead of people who have been there, first of all, right? It, it, approach the teachers and ask them what they believe he would want, second of all. And then third of all, make sure that that investment is from now until your, 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 your number's called, right? Not just this week, not just this month, not just this school year. Make it a considerable investment. Size it up. Look, okay, I can give you two hours a week. Okay, then go give the school two hours a week for the next five years. You understand? You figure out what it is that you can invest and you invest that, right? I do believe that the name should change. I do believe that people want to go stand out front and greet the kids. I think that that's awesome. But once that bell rings, you got to understand those teachers are going to still have the kids. They're going to still have the challenges because you have to understand that this was a socioeconomically um, disadvantaged, right? A racially identifiable school. We understand statistically what that means in terms of success, behavior, climate, discipline, all those things. Newt worked through that. Newt had a team there, teachers that helped work through that. And the bottom line is today and every day moving forward for the foreseeable future, those kids are going to remember Newt. Those teachers are, are going to be impacted by his leaving, by him not being there. We understand statistically what it means when a leader changes in a building and then think about what it means when something tragic happens. And the level of trauma that the people there are going to experience. The point that I'm making is that we need to make the investment that Newt was making. We need to continue that investment that Newt was making. And that's on a daily basis, bro. It's not just one time. It's not just standing out front one week. It's really getting inside, understanding what needs to be done. And whatever parts you think you can play, play that part. And just do it consistently and, and dedicate as much as you can to it. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the teachers, the students, and the parents over at Warner are going to need it. And I think that this, this I mean, to be honest, I think that this is a, a clear sign um, of how leadership should work, how buildings should work. Like, and it's a shame that it took him to pass for us to really come to a realization that this man was larger than life. Like as an advocate, I knew how effective the man was because I never had any 
problems in his building. If I don't have problems in a building, I already know that, that especially in a, a building like Warner with the demographics that we just discussed, that I just talked about, like at the end of the day, I understand how powerful it is if people are not calling advocates. He invited me to the school. He always wanted me at the school. I just was running around doing other things. I couldn't make it over there. Just last week, twice, he told me, big homie, when you come in to see me? Because he was that transparent. He was that open to redirection or, or, or uh, objective feedback. He was open, man. He was willing to accept the help. He was willing to fight to do whatever he needed to do to make that building work for his kids. And I love Newt for that. And it's a shame that it took for him to pass for us to realize the impact that he was making over there. The impact that he's made in people's lives. Look at the number of pictures that you see on Facebook with Newt in them. Look at the number of pictures that you see on Facebook with Newt in them. He was having a good time. He communicated with everybody like they were his best friend. He transitioned from being a block boy to a doctor of education. You understand? Like, Newt, whether we recognized it in his living or not, he was a legend. He was a living giant. And I'll be honest with you, we missed it while he was here. The question is, are we going to continue the work that he was doing and make the investment that he was making? He made a sizable investment in children every single day. And in order for our next generation to build and to grow and develop and be better, we're going to have to continue the invest on the investment and the commitment that he made. That's my encouragement. I'm, I'm with changing the school name. I'm with new people coming and showing up because they're, they're organizations that have been doing that and, and I applaud them, right? I'm saying they have been doing it and they should continue to do it. But my hope is that we just fall behind the people who've been there, who've already made the investments, right? And, and understand what Newt would want, what would be best for that building, what would be the most effective in helping the children. So once again, I would like to say rest in peace, Dr. Newton. And hopefully as a community, we come together and we start to fight for our kids like he did. Real talk. takes a village That's right. it takes a village and one of the things that I heard Newt say because we rode together he was one of our brothers is that we got work to do yes. Yes. Right. what he did in this school became a model for the United States yes, of America yes. Right. Yes. and it doesn't matter that he may not be here physically but legends never die, never die. Never die. That's, right. That's right legends that. never That's die right. So I want everybody to touch somebody. Let's go, y'all. Just up. touch somebody. Touch somebody. Come on. 
Hey, Just touch somebody. Touch somebody. Touch somebody. Yeah. And let us pray. Father, we bless you and we thank you for this time. We thank you for this day and this hour, oh God. We thank you for the people that have come out to show their love and the support, oh God, of a son of a man that you created for this time and this purpose. We God, we thank you for what he has done. We thank you for what he's going to do, even in his absence, oh God. Because his memory and his legend will never die. God, so I pray now that you would comfort the family, comfort his siblings, oh God, comfort his wife, his children, oh God, in the days and the weeks and the months and the years to come. God, when the phone calls have stopped, oh, yeah. I pray, God, that you would be a comfort, that you would give them precious memories that will cause them to smile. God, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So listen. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Listen up, listen up. The last thing I want everybody to do, we're over here in this big park out of the city, but I want everybody to hear us in the city. Right? Yes. Out of the city. Yes. And you know what? I really didn't want to tell you, but I got to tell you. Huh? His name is Duke. Yes. His name is Duke. His name is Duke. His name is Duke. Hi, my name is Talaysha Lingham. I'm a SNAP Band Nutrition Educator from Delaware State University. Hi, my name is Beverly Fountain with Delaware State University's SNAP Ed program. DSU SNAP Ed nominated Dr. Terrence Newton, who is the principal at Warner Elementary in Wilmington, Delaware, as a friend of Extension. We had to pilot a new Smarter Lunch Rooms program and he did not hesitate to accept us and help us to pilot that program. So congratulations, Dr. Terrence Newton. So we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Terrence Newton for your wonderful work. And congratulations again for being a friend of Extension. I am the proud principal here at Warner Elementary School, which is in the Red Clay Consolidated School District. I'm, I'm flattered. I'm floored. Um, never expected to get this kind of a award. What I do for my students in the community is not to get something in return as far as you know, to, be, to be acknowledged. I just want my community and my students to do well. I want them to be successful. I'm a full-fledged Hornet. I uh, did 12 years at Delaware State University where I got my bachelor's, my master's, and my doctoral degree. So I'm a diehard Hornet. My, both universities are acknowledging me for the work that I do in the community. It's huge, and I really, really appreciate that. I never expected in a million years that Delaware State and UD would come together to grant me an award for helping my babies. I just wish that you know, we can continue, continue this work with, number one, educating our babies and teaching them how to be successful. Number two, building those relationships with the universities and in public schools. And number three, acknowledging a lot of folks out here who are working hard and going above and beyond 
to service our communities, to, to change the world. You know, it's a lot of folks over here that should have the S on their chest and be acknowledged for what they do. But because they're not being acknowledged, I think that we just need to work harder to acknowledge them. So, and I just want to say on the behalf of Warner Elementary School and the Red Clay Consolidated School District, I want to say thank you for your time. Thank you for, for having, having me on. And I definitely want to thank Ms. Langham and Ms. Fountain, who every time they come in this building, they have a smile on their face and they're looking to change our kids when they come in this building. And I want to thank, you know, Dale State University, always my home, and UD as well. You guys are doing an amazing job. And guess what? I expect a lot from you guys. You're my building leaders, correct? Yes, sir. I'm proud of you guys, man. Who watching the games this weekend? Who's in the playoff? In my eyes, all our students are leaders. This is the time to allow me to groom better leaders, building their character and shaping relationships. Three words I say to you guys all the time. I love you. I love you. Yeah. Outside of my duties of doing classroom observations, walkthroughs, meeting with parents, I usually cut hair probably once a week. Whatever else it takes for us to build a strong community here at Warner. It's able for me not to be Dr. Newton, but to be new and be a mentor to my students. We just, you know, shoot the power out, have conversations, and talk about things in life. Anybody do anything exciting for the weekend? Yeah. It's an experience to see Dr. Newton as our principal doing this to help the youth in this community. He like for everybody to look good. He motivates us to do better. So now my next question is, right? If you guys go to college, what would you take up in college? I think I might be a lawyer. When I grow up, I want to be a principal just like Dr. Newton. I want to get a good education. I'm going to set up a barbershop too. It's opportunities for them to see us outside of our suit and ties as not just professionals, but people that they can aspire to be. You know, we don't have enough black males in education, so maybe we're aspiring them to get into education. Just really changing the dynamic and the perspective of how they may see the world. And that's the goal, man. I want to give you guys great options so y'all can make decisions, man. Because if you don't make good decisions, you know, it's, it's gonna hurt you. I don't wanna see none of you guys hurt, man. I've been cutting the kids' hair for like the last 15 years. If I noticed a kid probably don't have the time or the money to get their hair cut, I would cut their hair. I, you know, once I became the principal at Warner, I wanted to have my own barbershop setting where I can bring the kids down, build relationships, use that time to have conversations on top of them reading books, on top of me cutting their hair. I think it's also fitting that within the black community, within in the urban communities, the role that barbershops tend to play in our lives. You know, it's an opportunity to, to engage in storytelling, fellowship, and so why not pay it forward and actually create an environment right now for our young men here at Warner Elementary. I always say that to you guys every day about how you are to put energy into positive things in life. That's being a leader, and that's what I expect from you guys 10 and 15 years from now, okay? I'm proud of you guys, man. I'm real proud of you guys. You guys just got to keep up the good work, and, and you know, we are still have our conversations in here. You know, as I was looking at those various clips and seeing all the wonderful things he engaged in, there are professionals who would say to you, this is just not professional. Jumping in a pool, riding a bike through the hallway, uh, cheering kids on. 
But can I just say this to you? The traditional way of educating may not be the only way. The kids' scores turned around. The school culture, the Greek word, the ethos of the school, turned around in a very positive way. Parents were happy to send their children to school. Children were happy to have those barbershop conversations with Newt. And I often joke with him. I said, it could be because you're the same height as most of them. And he would come back at me and say, you're only two inches taller. But, but he had such life and charisma. And I'm glad that whoever served during the time when he first got to Warner Elementary, never stopped him in what his vision was to turn the school around. This brother showed us, those of us who are educators, those of us who consider themselves to be professionals, that you don't have to be so tight. You can be loose and accomplish the goals that needs to be accomplished in order for young people to grow and flow. People want to know your heart over your hand. All too often, they know our hand. When we speak of a principal, we speak of a person who is mean and sturdy and, 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 and making sure everything stay in order. That wasn't Brother Newt. Brother Newt had the authority. He did not abuse it, but he used it to his advantage. He showed the children his heart. He showed them what it looks like, feel like, and is to be human and to be treated as such. I enjoy and I applaud him for the fun that he had with his young people. When I saw the outpour of love through all the social medias, I, I, I didn't understand to the level he was loved until he, was, he transitioned. But thanks be to God that however many years that he lived, he enjoyed every one of them. But I'm sure he could testify to all of us and say, listen, I've had some good days. And I've had some bad days. I've had some hills to climb. But all of my good days outweighed my bad days. So I won't complain. When I sat and was talking with Paula, she was very clear. He was not a complainer. He was one who would always try to find the happy spot, the fun spot. How can we do it? Never stopping at anything. These are the things that matters in life. We cannot become uh, distant from the place where God brought us from. We ought to be proud of who God has made us to be, never forgetting where he brought us from. He is a son. He is a son of Wilmington. He is a product of the public school system, and he did well. He came back and he served well, and we're grateful for that. So as we looked at all the fun he had with his children, he made national news when he decided, I need to give more than just an educational experience. I need to give them life experience. His philosophy was very simple. Children do better when they feel better. Children are better when they feel better. That matters. And he decided to open the barbershop. Now, there are many who will take credit and say, oh, this was the greatest thing. But there were some who criticized. But look at the results of it. He also made sure that they have a dental plan. When a child feel good, look good, can smile. He understood that there was not a lot of children who did not have dental plans, but he brought that program to his school because he cared about his babies. They were, they mattered to him. To every aspiring principal, every young person who's looking to advance themselves in the educational field, as well as to work with young people, Take Dr. Newt as an example of what true leadership looks like. I'm proud to call him friend. I'm proud to call him parishioner. And as I looked at his national recognition, it was just remarkable as he had this interview. And when I looked at it the second time, I saw again, it was remarkable. Let's take a look at it real quick that yeah. I went to school with and really just getting it out there and being able to communicate your feelings is so important. I think it saved my life as a teenager. Yeah, my gosh, that's awesome. All I can say is wow, wow, wow again. He had an opportunity to be on national TV and he was able to mesmerize 
not only those who interviewed him, Kelly Clarkson and those, but also mesmerized the audience that were there as well as the viewers across this country. This brother programs really matter. I have labeled him as being a trend setter, a trailblazer, and a torch bearer. He was the first in many different areas of his life. And it becomes important as we look at this time of tribute that we recognize that he did it. He accomplished it. And I'm very big on telling every person what you do to others reflect who you are. He never saw himself as bigger. He was always a part of, always having fun, always wanting to laugh. I often joke, I was joking with his wife when we were talking about the motorcycle. Here he is, Dr. Newt, riding the motorcycle everywhere, making sure that everybody know that I'm a motorcycle rider. Here I am. That's what he did in his spare time, his free time. And I'm grateful to God his membership with the Thunder Guards, those things matter. He was universal. He wasn't one dimensional. He tried to touch the lives of every person, not just one segment of life. That matters. Well, how was he as a family man? I watched him as his pastor. He joined the Ezion Fair, I believe it was in 2000 and, 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 and 12 stayed faithful. We went through the COVID situation. He invited his church to be a part of the prayer we had every Friday. He was very active in his faith, but he was very active also with his family. He has three boys and we thank God for all three of them. And we will be praying that God will continue to strengthen them. He has a daughter and we are also praying for her that God will continue to strengthen her and keep her during this season. Because right now, a lot of telephone calls are coming in and they are very appreciative to all the people who have given the tribute. But at some point, all of that will vanish. I give to you all the Lord and I ask that you take serious that he's the one who's going to keep you in the absence of dad to his wife, Paula, a precious saint here at Ezion Fair. I'm grateful that y'all found each other. I'm grateful that y'all connected years of being together, ups and downs, but you have been an excellent wife. I often said y'all were perfect because he was such an extrovert and you're such an introvert because what it took the two to make the one. In areas where you all needed to be quiet, you were that shining star. In areas where y'all needed to speak up and be noticed, he was the shining star. That's what makes a perfect marriage. If both of you were exactly the same, it would be just nothing but chaos. I am grateful to him and the illustration that he has given us. No, he was not perfect. We don't want to, we don't want to get it confused. And can I be honest with you? Neither are you and neither am I. We all have issues and have had issues in our lives. We've all had our interruptions in life. But it's not about the person who falls down. It's really about the person who's able to get back up. He showed us what a bounce back spirit is all about. I'm grateful for that. And as we celebrate him and have watched videos and have heard some of the music that he enjoyed, you need to know that life offers the same thing for you. And I hope that you will take it seriously. It's never about the day you were born and it's never about the day that you transition. It's about the dash that's in the middle. And I'm asking that you take that serious because what you do in the middle speaks to who you are for real. Newt has filled it well in his 47 years of living. He showed us what it looks like to be faithful, faithful to life, faithful to his God, faithful to his family, faithful to his friends, and faithful to humanity. Humanity at large, we are suffering a great void right now. But what I'm grateful to God about is that we can take the examples that he has given us and let him live 
a long time after we have done the final celebration of his life. You all have to understand something. Life, as Forrest Gump have said, is like a box of chocolate. Sometimes we get good days and sometimes we get bad days, but it's how we handle them. Brother Newt was excellent at doing that. I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to spend some time to just just asking God's mercy over his school, asking God's grace over his family and friends and those of you who loved him sincerely, because without prayer, there is a void. He understood the power of prayer. That's why they opened up their school day with it, because prayer changes things. And now we need the God of comfort to be strongly with us and protecting us. Pray with me real quickly. Eternal and all wise heavenly father, I want to thank you for your goodness, your kindness and your tender mercies. I want to thank you for your grace and for your peace. You have blessed this world with a great giant. He's done the things that you have assigned to his hand and now you've called him back to be with you. And father, while we are suffering through this time of transition, you are too wise to make any mistakes. You're too kind to be cruel to us. And today, God, we pray your comfort over his family, over his school, over his friends and everyone who loved him. Strengthen them, God, in this moment and make us whole. Let us realize that we can get up from where we are and we can do more and be more. Thank you for the life that he's lived. And Father, we thank you because you loaned him to us and we give you all glory. We give you all honor and we give you all praise. This is our prayer today in Jesus name. Amen. We'll be right back. I've been cutting kids hair from quite a long time. And you know, what I noticed is that um, a lot of kids, you know, they have a haircut and they feel good. They act good. Well, I'm in a barber shop. I'm not Dr. Newton, their, their principal. I'm more of Dr. Newton, their barber. And my favorite part is uh, just to, you know, to communicate with, with my students. Uh, uh, LeBron came up, passed the ball between his legs, and Dwight banged it, remember? Yeah, that was tough. That was tough. I just like to know what they're thinking, what they're reading, what, are, what they're learning today, and some of their goals. So tell me where you see yourself at in, in 10 years. Doing what? NBA. But what if you don't go to the NBA, what's playing B? You know, some students may express some of the issues that they're dealing with um, at home or in the community. And at this time, I'm able to listen and give them some feedback. What else is going on? You got anything else you want to share with me today? How was your weekend? What'd you do different? Just a basic haircut. Like I'm not really good with um, drawing lines, anything like that. So I just kind of keep it basic. Um, just like a nice clean cut so that the kids can, can feel good about themselves. And we're back as we're closing out this time of Coffee with Curry and with this special presentation that we've certainly done for our good friend, Brother Terrence Newton, who is better known as Newt. Um, I just want to um, share with you the services for this week on Tuesday, April the 5th. Here at e Zion Fair from 6 to, uh, to 9 p.m., we will be having the Awake here at the church. We ask that you would, if you want to come and view, be a part of the celebration that we're going to have here at the church, you are certainly welcome. Again, that's on Tuesday at five. I mean, at 6 p.m. from 6 to 9 p.m., we'll be having a, 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 a um, viewing of Brother Newt, and we hope that you can join us. Our praise team will certainly be singing. We will also have the Monday 
Sunday Club. We'll be doing some things there. We'll have an opportunity for those of you who want to give reflections, to give reflections at that time. We want you to spend some time just being able to celebrate a king's life. This man stood taller in his stocking feet than most other men did and do on stilts. So I hope that you will join us as we will celebrate his life in our viewing on this coming Tuesday at 6 p.m. until 9 p.m. here at the Ezion Fair Baptist Church. If you need more information, certainly feel free to call us at 302 652 9114. Again, that's 302 652 9114. And we will certainly give you whatever information that you so desire. Let me also share with you that on Wednesday, April the 6th, at starting at 8 a.m. until 11 a.m. AM, we will be having the viewing at the Chase Center down at the riverfront. We'll be having the viewing and we will have a full celebration uh, home going service for him starting at 11 a.m. Come early, get your seat so that you can be a part of this celebration. It's going to be wonderful because the life he lived speaks to something great that we should do. And we're grateful for all of you who will be interested. And if you do need to know any other information on the services, you can certainly contact the Gore Funeral Home, who has certainly are uh, doing the, 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 the preparation for him. Or you can contact us here at the church. That's 302-652-9114. It has been a joy, a privilege, sharing this moment of celebration about our brother Terrence Newton, better known as Newt. I'm grateful to God that God blessed me to pastor such a giant, such a great person. And I pray for those of you who are going through this moment of transition and you're hurting that the comfort of God will be with you and stand by you. Let me say, as we're closing, we're going to spend the last few moments of this broadcast uh, just basically doing the vigil that was held for him just a few days ago, as well as some still pictures so that you can reflect on the man, the person who he was, brother Terrence Newton. We will miss you. We love you. And we pray that God will continue to be with you. God bless all of you. May the works I've done speak for me. May the works I've done speak for me. When I'm wrapped, skin in my grave, and there's nothing else can be said, may the works I've done speak for me. May the works I've done speak for me. May the works I've done speak for me when I'm resting in my grave and there's nothing else can be said may the works I've done oh Lord speak for me may the service I give speak for me may the service Speak for me When I've done the best I can And my friends don't understand May the service I give Speak for me May the works I've done 